Welcome to Mandarin United Methodist Church and Longleaf Church's Child and Youth Protection Training video. This video is required in addition to a once a year in-person training that is held at the church. In addition to watching this video, we need to verify you received a copy of the actual policy. You can either obtain one from the church or print it from our website. Upon receiving it, please sign and date, then turn it in to your child or youth ministry leader. Every volunteer is also required a one-time volunteer application and every three years you must have a background screening done by the church. All forms are on our website under serve slash child and youth protection training. There is an online quiz you are to complete upon watching this video. Once that is completed, church staff will receive an email verifying that you have done your training. We will now cover off on the definition and recognition of child abuse. For purposes of this policy, child abuse includes any of the following. Physical abuse, violent, non-accidental contact, which results in injury. This includes, but is not limited to, striking, biting, or shaking. Injuries include bruises, fractures, cuts, and burns. Sexual abuse, any form of sexual activity with a child or youth, whether at the church, at home, or any other setting. The abuser may be an adult, an adolescent, or another minor. Emotional abuse, a pattern of intentional conduct which crushes a child or youth spirit or attacks his or herself wet worth through rejection, threats, terrorizing, isolating, or belittling. Neglect, failure to provide for a child or youth's basic needs or failure to protect a child or youth from harm. When child abuse occurs in our neighborhoods, it gets our attention and sometimes serves as a catalyst in a way that nameless and faceless children counted in statistics cannot. However, it is important to understand the following statistics. The National Center for Child Abuse and Neglect reports that there are more than 2 million incidents of physical abuse and or neglect per year in the USA. That amounts to 30 out of every 1,000 children. Studies have estimated that one out of three girls is sexually abused before the age of 18. Similarly, studies indicate one out of seven boys have been sexually abused before the age of 18. Even more frightening is that these numbers may be underestimated since many children are reluctant to report abuse. The National Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse in the USA reports that 2,000 deaths are attributable to child abuse each year. Let's think again about the first number. Two million incidents of abuse per year. That equals 5,479 children abused each day. Approximately 228 children abused per hour. Nearly four children abused per minute. And one child abused every 15 seconds, night or day, weekday or weekend, Sabbath or otherwise. For these reasons, Mandarin United Methodist Church and Longleaf Church have increased our requirements. For everything we do, we require two screened adults with children and youth at all times. Our aim is to protect the children, youth, and our adult volunteers and workers, and this is the best first step we can take to do that. The Florida Conference creates a thorough children and youth protection policy and reviews it annually. It covers screening and selection of church staff and adult volunteers, ongoing education of persons who work with children and youth, supervision of children and youth, transportation trip and retreat supervision, use of church facilities by outside groups, online safety, and responding to allegations of child abuse. We will go over procedures on child abuse later in this training. We have all of this in place for many reasons. Our church is a community of faith that can offer a safe haven and sanctuary where children and youth can seek advice, help, and nurture. Our church is a place where more than just facts of child abuse can be taught. We can also teach and proclaim our Christian values of compassion, justice, repentance, and grace. Our church is a place where children can come and learn and develop the inner strength and spiritual resources they will need to feel truly connected to God and to face suffering and evil. Our church can be the place where children and adults are able to learn how to respond to painful and confusing events using the wisdom of the scripture. These reports and data demonstrate that we cannot ignore the possibility that abuse could happen here. For the sake of our children and the protection of our workers and volunteers against false allegations, we need to intentionally work to prevent abuse. We will now cover off on the age level characteristics. Knowing what is appropriate for each age level enhances the learning by our students. Each level has its own unique aspects that when they are acknowledged and planned for produces more learning and less discipline problems. Here are some sample ideas. Ages three to six, moral development. Preschoolers are very me oriented. They are the center of their own worlds. Their entire view of right and wrong, along with their faith, is based upon what influential models, such as parents and teachers, tell them. Cognitive level. Preschoolers' play is symbolic of real life. Ages six to eight. Moral development. For younger children, the moral code is an eye for an eye. If they are pinched, they pinch back. Personal values are rooted in a law and order approach. 
things that benefit young children are almost always seen as right, whereas harmful things are almost always viewed as wrong. The world, like their faith, is black and white cognitive level. Young children think in concrete terms about the ideas and concepts they're learning. They need help understanding symbolic or abstract ideas. Ages 9 through 12. Moral development. Children at this age begin to see shades of gray in their world. They question authority and understand that individual values can impact the lives of others. They also begin to understand that doing wrong things means more than just getting into trouble or facing punishment from parents or teachers. Faith becomes a working, personal faith. Older children continue to think in concrete terms, although by the end of childhood, they can, be more, readil they can more readily understand abstract concepts. We will now cover the appropriate behavior for teachers and leaders of children and youth events. Appropriate behavior shows how we value and respect our children and students. The following are specific ways that are good ways to interact with your students. Listening to them and discerning their needs is crucial to preventing difficulties. Establishing a sense of trust early in the life of a class or group is essential to communication, cooperation, and creating a safe environment. Taking an interest in your students, no playing favorites and being fair are key ingredients to creating healthy relationships. Taking students aside when possible during times of confrontation allows them to save face. Making judicious use of the following behaviors can aid in communicating to your students. Make eye contact. Use safe touch on their shoulder or their hand. Be clear regarding acceptable behavior. Kneel to be on the same physical level. Use activities to keep students involved. Take time to learn about each student's interest. Listen and be sensitive to the quiet, shy student. Abuse reporting, responsibilities, and procedures. Florida Statute 39.201, entitled Mandatory Reports, states that any person who knows or has reasonable cause to suspect that a child is abused, abandoned, or neglected by a parent or legal custodian, caregiver, or other person responsible for the child's welfare, as defined in this chapter, shall report such knowledge or suspicion to the department. Appropriate boundaries refer to appropriateness in how we play or lead with our students. We need to know the difference between childlike and childish behavior. It also refers to appropriate touch in the classroom and other group settings. These are the definition of appropriate interpersonal boundaries. The following are acceptable ways for touching a student. On the hand, shoulder, or upper back. In the company of other adults, never against a student's will, unless in the case of clear and present danger to them. Never against a student's verbally or non-verbally expressed discomfort never when it would have the effect of overstimulating a student, never in a place on a student's body that is normally covered by a bathing suit. Behaviors that might be misunderstood as intrusive or invasive to students. Embarrassing a student about his or her body. A student sitting in a leader's lap. Telling students or engaging in conversation that is lurid or overstimulating. Giving someone a deep back massage. We will now cover the supervision of children and youth. The general rules include a two adult rule, in and out of the classroom for any church related class or activity, a three year rule, adults supervising children and youth must be at least three years older, the six month rule, adults working with children and youth must also be a church member, windows and open doors, classes must have a window or wall with the window or door, half door or open door. Supervision of classroom activities, from birth to fifth grade, the two adult rule holds true with a designated floating adult. Grade six through 12, also the two adult rule with designated floating adult. Sign in and sign out procedures are required from birth to fifth grade. Supervision of non-classroom activities is the same as in a classroom. Mentoring programs are the same as in a classroom with a few exceptions. Please seek further advice if you would like to mentor a child or youth. The following are the regulations in regards to transportation. Two 21 or older screened adults can transport two minimum children and youth. Seatbelts are required. Drivers are not permitted to use cell phones or mobile devices unless required for communication with other drivers, but no texting. Youth drivers are not permitted to drive from church to an off-site church activity. When trip is 100 miles or more from the point of departure, the driver must be on an approved list. When the trip exceeds 500 miles round trip, the church trip form must be completed. The following are the regulations required for the trip and retreat supervision. 
Two unrelated screened adults are required, one per gender. The two screened adults are prohibited from sleeping in the same room or tent. On any overnight trips, the person in charge must carry the parental permission slips, including permission for emergency medical care. When on the trip, there must be access to a phone, cell phone, or mobile device. If the outing involves swimming, there must be a certified lifeguard or at least one adult who is certified in CPR. Hotels must have interior open rooms and no Airbnbs. The following are regulations in regards to electronic communications. Electronic communications with children and youth should be limited to information about program dates and activities and should be made only by group emails or on the church's official website or the church's public Facebook page or other social media platforms of which the parents are aware and have given consent or can access publicly. One-on-one -on -one communication with children and youth is generally prohibited. No personally identifiable information of participating children or youth should be posted online or on any social media site. Refrain from using names and do not post a last name, address, or phone number when posting photos. No tagging is allowed. The items covered in this training are most important. However, the entire policy is very important. You are responsible for fully reading through the entire policy. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact a children or youth ministry staff member. Thank you.